that wrestler a few weeks ago, guys. She was uh, fucking on top of the world, man. She was amazing. Fucking the crowd loved her. She was fucking killing it on promos, even on social media. In the ring, she was she was just fucking hitting home runs every time she went out there. What was her name? Fuck. It's been a long time. She's fucking in the past now. Becky Lynch. That's what it was. Becky Lynch. We all fucking loved Becky Lynch. And then wham. The second she got shelved, Vince replaced her with Charlotte Flair, and he wasted no time. He tried to copy the same exact formula that got Becky Lynch cheered and hoped that it would get Charlotte cheered, and it did. LA on Sunday at Survivor Series, up in arms, roaring in adulation for Charlotte Flair. Attacking Ronda Rousey after the match and beating her. And then last night during her promo, everybody in LA cheering for Charlotte. Vince McMahon heard that. Vince McMahon saw that it worked. Now trust me, I don't think that's going to keep going because people will realize what's going on. But by that point, the damage is already done. Vince has already heard the cheers for his pride and joy, his golden child Charlotte. So if you think for one second that Charlotte Flair is not going to replace Becky Lynch, as far as status, you got another thing coming and you don't know Vince McMahon. Because that's what he wanted from the beginning. He didn't want Becky Lynch, he wanted Charlotte. But how can we get Charlotte to be wanted, to get those cheers, to get that response? Follow the same formula as Becky. With Becky, it's much more original, though. It's much more organic, right? It doesn't feel as forced. But Charlotte is a natural-born heel anyway. So she can make this work to her standards and Vince McMahon's standards. So either way, whether it feels forced or not, she's going to play a dynamite heel because that's what Charlotte Flair is at heart. She's a natural-born heel. So either way... Becky Lynch loses in this situation. Her getting knocked out, basically, by Nia Jax. Her getting fucked up and put on the shelf by Nia Jax. Has halted that momentum. Yes, when she comes back, she's going to get the massive cheers. We're going to continue to cheer her. She's going to continue to be badass. But Vince McMahon saw what just happened this weekend. Saw the response that it got. And he's gonna go with Charlotte Flair. And you fucking know I'm right. This is why I told you guys. Becky Lynch getting injured is not a blessing in disguise. You have some idiots in this community that just were up in arms. Screaming at the top of their lungs. Don't worry BC. This is a blessing in disguise. Because now we're gonna get Ronda and Becky at Wrestlemania. Why the fuck do I give a fuck? What you call the event. They were about to main event. Over at the time. Lesnar and Styles. what we were hearing. This is before Brian got put in. They were going to main event Survivor Series. One of the big four pay-per-views. At the height right now of their careers. Because we don't know what, what's going to happen a half a year from now. Right now this is the peak for them. And they were about to do battle. And that's a blessing. Why? Because I get a new fucking WrestleMania. They're going to fucking challenge each other. And maybe, maybe Vince will put him in the main event. See, it's a blessing in disguise. Vince McMahon doesn't book a week from now. And when he does, he changes his mind 76 times. And you think you're getting Ronda and Becky. Uh, Vince McMahon made up his mind days after Becky Lynch got injured that that's going to be his WrestleMania main event. You honestly believe that? When his golden child has been Charlotte from the beginning. And that's a blessing in the sky. Nia Jax is now getting heat. CBC, this is a blessing. Now we get real, badass heat Nia. Nobody gives a fuck about Nia Jax. Nobody cares about what heat she's getting. If it's heel heat, organic heat, nuclear heat, furnace heat, keeping her warm in the winter. Nobody gives a fuck about Nia Jax. She's talentless. I don't give a fuck if she's getting heat or any kind of heat. That's your blessing in disguise? Now we get to give a fuck about Naya? We don't give a fuck about Naya. 
What the fuck does she bring to the table? Now all of a sudden she's exciting because we boo for her? Boo! Wow, she's got the hashtag break faces. Nia's an all-star. Give her the championship. When it comes to Nia Jax, let's do our wrestling chant, guys. You deserve it. You deserve it. Nobody? It's Nia. She's getting nuclear organic heat. Woohoo! What a blessing in disguise. Becky Lynch getting injured was. There is no blessing from one of your top rising stars getting injured. This isn't a comparison to Stone Cold. When Stone Cold got injured, he was on TV every week, BC, and that's when he got really popular. I don't see Becky Lynch on TV every week. That's because Vince doesn't want her on it. He wants all of that to Charlotte now. And we saw it begin instantly. At Survivor Series, Charlotte was named the replacement. We saw it instantly. During that match, Charlotte took the heel approach that Becky took to get over. Last night, given the promo, I'm willing to do anything when it involves this, that, and the other thing. And this is the new Charlotte. It's the road Becky went on. And Becky can't do shit about it. Becky's on the shelf. So now everyone's clinging to this new badass Charlotte. That's your blessing in disguise? And maybe, you guys are hoping, maybe it comes full circle. And maybe Becky and Ronda will end up at WrestleMania. I still, even if that was to ever come true, I still wouldn't give a fuck. I would rather that Survivor Series main event and we all can move on with bigger and better shit. Rather than waiting a half a year to see a match that I was already going to get Sunday. And I didn't care who was going to win or lose because everybody was going to come out a winner. That was proven Sunday with Charlotte and Ronda. Everybody went out a winner. Ronda took the beating of a lifetime. In my eyes, she, her stock rose exponentially. Charlotte came out the winner because look at her now. The fan response is off the charts for her. We're all going to chant Becky loud in every arena when she returns. We're still going to look at her as fucking the top of the top over there on the SmackDown for the SmackDown females. But Charlotte is going to get that spot now because Vince runs the company, not us. L.A. fucked up. L.A. cheered Charlotte through the fucking roof. Vince heard it and now Vince is set in stone. Don't believe me? How about Roman Reigns? Four years in a row, Vince put him in every fucking main event that he wanted him to, even though a lot of us were like, fuck no, please stop. Vince didn't give a fuck. He knew, he heard some of those cheers, whether it was the females, the kids, some of the fucking males. He heard those cheers and he's like, you know what, we got some of them. And that's why I said, don't be so sure Becky Lynch is even going to have that championship come WrestleMania. Don't be so sure Becky Lynch is going to be in any main event at WrestleMania. Don't even be sure that Vince will give Becky Lynch a fucking Mania match. Obviously, that would be fucking criminal, and I doubt that would happen, but don't put it past Vince. You guys are so sure about shit, and you forget who you're dealing with. Vince McMahon. Nothing set in stone for Mania. So this was not a blessing in disguise, and right now, all I see is Charlotte Flair... Trying to take all the momentum that Becky Lynch had. And Becky isn't even on TV to cut a promo or any shit. Concussion? Broken? No, you can come out and fucking be seen, cut a couple couple lines, stay prevalent, relevant. No, Vince wants Charlotte to have all that. Alexa Bliss is injured right now, right? She's on every fucking show, it seems. Can't have Becky just show up? No, that would impede on Charlotte's momentum. Vince can't have that. Don't be surprised if Vince McMahon now goes full throttle with this Charlotte character, man. And again, I think Charlotte should have been heel all along. But this just seems way too Becky Lynch-ish for yours truly. And some people on social media are trying to really defend Charlotte. And again, I like Charlotte, so to me, you don't have to defend it. But... It's way too similar for me. 
But some people trying to defend Charlotte are trying to say it's different than Becky, though. Because with Charlotte, she's frustrated. With Becky, she's empowered. They're trying to come up with, like, words to try to, like, make it different. This looks like the same formula for Becky Lynch that Becky Lynch took. Same type of, type of formula. And now Charlotte, the only twist is Charlotte's doing all of this. It started for Becky. To try to even get Becky's fans, you know what I mean? <laughs> and try to get that response. I don't know, man. This is too similar. And as much as I like Charlotte Flair, and as much as I know she has to be heel, wow, man. This is way, this is fucked up. Because this is way too close to Becky Lynch's semi-heel turn. Kind of in the middle. This is way too close to Becky Lynch's meteoric rise to the top. For Vince to do this, I don't know, man. That's fucked up. He could have rode with Becky Lynch. Becky would have been back in a week or two, right? Maybe. We're hoping. You could have held up. You didn't need to do this Charlotte thing now, man. This thing could build to a four horsewomen, four horsewomen, but that didn't mean you need Charlotte Flair to do almost a heel turn like that. And I know, this is kind of midway. This isn't full throttle heel either, it doesn't seem. She was taking on Billy Kay and Peyton Royce last night. So like Becky, it's the same. That's what I mean. It's the same shit. Vince went with the same formula, basically. And it worked. Fucking LA, what are you doing? You're booing Ronda Rousey and cheering Charlotte and you're claiming it's for Becky. Anybody against Becky right now is going to get booed, BC. Well, guess what? You fucked over Becky. Good job. For no reason. You booed Ronda for no fucking reason. You, you cheered up fucking Charlotte and now Vince is going to roll with that. And we saw it last night. Good job, Becky fans. Know what the fuck you're doing. If you would have just booed Charlotte and fucked over with Charlotte, Vince would have saw that and then he would have fucking maybe gotten the impression that nobody could replace Becky. And you didn't want to see Charlotte in that role. Now you just catapulted Charlotte into that role. Congrats. And it all comes full circle to what yours truly said in the beginning. Don't count on any match for WrestleMania because Vince McMahon has his own fucking agenda. Becky Lynch, whether you like it or not, got fucked over this weekend. She got fucked over royally. Charlotte stole the whole spot. That's just the truth. Let me end the social media debate because everyone's like fighting with each other. She's taking Becky's spot. No, it's different. She's doing the same thing as Becky. No, it's different. Everyone's fighting. I'm going to break the tie for you. She's absolutely doing what Becky did. She's absolutely attempting her and Vince to steal that spot from Becky. It ain't going to work with the fans. We're going to cheer Becky more. But Vince ain't going to give a fuck. He heard what LA gave Charlotte. And they're going to ride with that son of a bitch. All I know is Becky, when you come back, best of luck. Don't get buried by this twosome. I know that's your friend. I know Vince is your boss. But trust me, the work is in. The deed has been done. The seed has been planted. Becky Lynch is going to come ha have to come back more ferocious than ever before. Because they're gunning for that spot. And Charlotte is fucking... I'm sure Vince is loving this right now. Becky's on the shelf. She can't get any of that fan adulation response. Charlotte's getting all of it now. Unfucking real man. I can't believe they're doing that to Becky when she's out, bro. That's crazy. This is like Becky 2.0, man. Charlotte Flair starts off, like I said, man, and she, she cuts a promo, and this is the new new Charlotte. I don't even know what the fuck. It's not even full throttle heel, it doesn't seem. It's just following the same pattern as Becky. And then she takes on Billy Kane, Peyton Royce, because they come out and they have a little promo battle. Charlotte ends up beating Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, and then afterwards beats the fuck out of them, throwing over the throwing them over the table into the barricade, beating the fuck out of them, almost like she did Ronda Rousey. Obviously, Rousey at Survivor Series was much more brutal, but beating the fuck out of Peyton and Billy, getting more cheers, getting that fan response. This is the new 
badass Charlotte, the Woo Man. And that's that, man. That's your whole first segment. Almost an entire half an hour dedicated just to the Woo Man. And, uh, and then we... <laughs> I can't fucking... You can't make this shit up, man. Oh, Becky, get back, man. Get back fast. <laughs> Maybe this leads, like I said, to the four horsewomen, four horsewomen. If that's the case, then you better make Sasha and Bailey turn ruthless, badass. If Charlotte's doing it, you might as well make all of them do it. Sasha and Bailey, gun up on Raw and start fucking people up. Because it's Sasha Banks' fucking time now. So then we move on. This is the most nonsensical bullshit I could have fucking ever imagined. They, they pump up the state of the state address. It's almost like a state of the union address. Shane McMahon is going to address the 6-0 sweep, which we all know was really 6-1 because the pre-show, the SmackDown tag teams won. But for some reason, they disregarded that and they just counted the main show. So, okay, you have... 6-0. So six, six oh. Shane McMahon is going to address this and we're going to find out why this was done. Supposedly, right? Uh-uh. We got the opposite. Right? Because instead, all we got was Miz sucking up to Shane McMahon and asking Shane McMahon if they could be tag team partners. He brings out two local jobbers, Wayne and Dave, Wayne and Dan. Who the fuck knows these two clowns? They come to the ring. Shane McMahon really can't have a match. Obviously, he's battered and bruised from his performance Sunday. So the Miz takes on both of these jobbers by himself. Uh, Wade or Dan or Kevin or Bob or Joe or Duncan. Somebody rolls up the Miz. One, two, three. Miz loses the match. Miz is trying to tell Shane this is just a this is a one-off that wasn't supposed to happen. We could be an epic team. So he's trying to convince Shane McMahon. That's the segment. Listen, we love the comedy from The Miz. Whether he's a face, whether he's a heel, it doesn't matter. Miz is ultra entertaining. That's absolute fact. You give him good material, he's going to roll with it. You put in one of my favorites, Shane McMahon, and I can love that. However, this was not the time for it because this was the time to address... The 6-0 sweep, which again, we know is 6-1 for the tag team match, but they didn't count that. So storyline-wise, it's 6-0. The sweep at Survivor Series, Raw just totally annihilated SmackDown. Not only did Shane McMahon not even address it, not even mention that, they didn't set up anything from that story. This was the time to not only address it, but to set up something epic. Shane McMahon vowed that there were going to be major changes following Survivor Series because of what happened. That gets you a little intrigued. It's going to be a little bit of a shakeup. People are going to get fired, maybe show up on Raw. Other people are going to be punished. People are going to have to prove themselves. This could be some epic shit for SmackDown. I could think of 30 storylines off the top of my head that could stem from a 6-0 sweep. Instead... They didn't mention a fucking thing about it. They didn't set up one iota of a fucking storyline from this whole sweep. It was all for nothing. Smackdown looked like a bunch of dipshitted dweebs for zero reasoning. None. Didn't even set up anything. This was the opportunity to set up awesome shit. You want to be on SmackDown, you have to prove yourself and you make motherfuckers go through the gauntlet. You tell motherfuckers, why should I not fire you? What do you bring to SmackDown? Everybody would be upping their game. You could have intriguing stories coming from this, at least leading into TLC. Nothing! Nothing! SmackDown just got sweeped because Vince was in the board meeting and said... I want SmackDown getting sweeped. Okay, Vince, is there a reason? I don't need a reason. Okay, Vince. Sweep, 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 sweep. Okay, Raw wins them all. Again, I don't know what the fuck happened with the tag team match. That must have been a clusterfuck. That must have sent Vince McMahon through the roof. That slipped under his radar. <laughs> so let's tell Michael Cole, don't even mention the pre-show. 
No mention at all of what happened at Survivor Series. That was the whole point of Shane saying there was going to be consequences and major changes. That was the whole point of Miz's State of the State address. This was going to be the best part of the show. Instead, two jobbers defeat The Miz. I wish I was going to tell you that's the most heated I'm going to get in this video, but it just gets fucking worse from there. And the show totally takes a fucking nosedive from there. Because then we go into the Thanksgiving feast fight, or whatever the fuck this was called. The New Day actually comes out like pilgrims, and our truth is dressed as a fucking turkey. And it gets worse, the bar comes out with the big show. That's even worse than pilgrims and a turkey. With New Day and our truth. I, I have no fucking idea. This was, uh... Why is the New Day taking on the fucking bar in a nonsensical match anyway? These are two of your best tag teams, and let's be honest, two of your only tag teams on SmackDown. We've already seen them so many times. Now we're throwing them out there in a fucking gimmick match. It's useless. So if they ever fight in the future, it diminishes the amount of anticipation and intrigue that we might have for such match. It totally diminishes any relevance. It diminishes any prestige. You don't think we're going to remember these fucking gimmick nonsensical bullshit matches? After this match, by the way, the New Day picks up a win. Over your tag team champions. Can't make the shit up. Over your tag strap champions after they just lost at Survivor Series. Because they fucking watch somebody pee their pants. That's... Uh, you can't make it up, man. And then they're losing in a feast match. And then afterwards, they're just getting food thrown. Cesaro, one of the best wrestlers in the world, gets food thrown at him for 37 seconds. Okay? Mashed potatoes, stuffing, pie, peas, jello, cranberry sauce, you name it. And he's staggering, and he's throwing punches. It must have been the potato salad. It really knocked him out. And he's going out. Oh shit, here comes the cranberry sauce. And he just can't handle it. And he drops. He's knocked out flat on his back. The cranberry sauce knocked out Cesaro. Corey Graves said it best. The second Cesaro's back hit the ground and he was knocked out from the cranberry sauce. This is a quote from Corey Graves. He said... And there's one half of your tag team champions. He could not have summed it up any better. That is the joke that is our tag team champions. That is the joke of the tag team division. That is the joke of the creativity that is in within this company. That, that, was, that was embarrassing for me to be watching that. If somebody was to fucking walk in that room at that moment. I don't know how I describe what I'm watching. How do you describe that? The poor person. Wh whose side are you on? The pilgrims or the person with the cranberry on his head? I, I, I Fuck. I don't know. Please excuse me while I put my head to a fucking cement wall. I'll come back with an answer. Let's put some more tag team nonsensical bullshit onto this though. Some more redundancy. Let's put Asuka back with Naomi. Can't get them separated. It's like Sasha and Bailey. We cannot separate them. Until these tag team championships are introduced. Which now I'm starting to think this is a worse thing than it is a, a good thing. I used to be on board with this, but if you're actually going to put your best talents together and your worst talents are going to go for the actual singles championships, I have an issue with this. Alexa Bliss, Nia Jax, they're all going for fucking championship gold singly. And Sasha and Bailey are together and Asuka and Naomi. So Asuka and Naomi are still stuck together against Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose split up. And now they're back together. They had their hissy fit. That worked for Survivor Series. And now Vince wants us all to just forget it. And now they're back together. 
Asuka and Naomi win this match? I would think so. It's Asuka and Naomi. It's like they just go through shit and, and behind the scenes, the creative writers and the bookers, and they're just like, what about Asuka and Naomi? First, they're like, yeah, let's just throw them together. And then they're like, okay, what about Asuka and Naomi, the tag team? Oh, fuck. We got to put them on. Uh, let's give them let's give them four minutes against Mandy and Sonya. But, but Mandy and Sonya are split up. Remember, we're doing something with them having animosity. Yeah, fuck it. Just put them together for now because it's Mandy and Sonya. People know that. All right, we got to get shit going. All right, fine. Penciled in. That's the that's the boardroom meeting. How can you tell me it's not? I just did that in 10 seconds. That's exactly what they did. Nobody's creatively doing anything for Asuka. Nobody is creatively doing anything for Naomi. They're sitting there like fucking mannequins. Hoping to be used in any which way. But they're not. It's like when you walk through the mall and you look into the clothing shops and you got the fucking naked mannequins. The fucking place never even put clothes on the motherfucker. Use the mannequin. Show off your clothes. Show off what they can do. Now, you walk by the place and the mannequin is naked. They're not even showcasing any of their clothes. Use them. Asuka and Naomi are like naked mannequins, not even being used in the fucking window. You're window shopping and there's Asuka and Naomi. Doing nothing. Showcasing nothing. Or if they're naked, they're showcasing everything. But you get what I'm saying. Daniel Bryan comes out, cuts a good promo. Daniel Bryan, using the third person, Daniel Bryan uh, didn't like this. Daniel Bryan doesn't like this. Daniel Bryan is going to go for his dreams. Uh, this is the new Daniel Bryan. That was the overall message. That was okay, yeah. But for a show that up to this point was just fucking lacking anything fun, anything exciting, it didn't do that much for me. And then we went into a main event. I mean, you're hoping your main event at least is something, man. We go into a main event that would be great if I jumped into a time machine and went back 15 years ago to 2002. Or 2003, where maybe Orton and Mysterio would be more relevant to me. That's my main event in 2018 with the rosters that they have today, the roster down in NXT, superstars around the world that could be fucking giving us the utmost entertainment. And we get Mysterio and Orton, and I can't make this up, in an eight minute match. Back in the day, you could shit on Vince Russo all you want. Vince Russo and Ed Ferreira, back in the Attitude Era, they were the only two writers back then. Two writers. And back then, you did Raw and SmackDown. Now, you got about 65 writers. That piece of paper goes through 65 people's hands, and this is the fucking shit we got. Badass RKO, Mysterio goes for a fucking, uh, what do you call it, just a slide, right, it's a reverse baseball slide, he goes head first, like he's going head first in the first baseman, he slides underneath that bottom rope, going to the outside, Orton's already on the outside, he catches up and RKO's, RKO's him, badass RKO, but we already know Orton can RKO out of nowhere, we already know Randy Orton can have badass moments with that RKO, what Orton needs is stories that we give a fuck about. What are you doing with Orton? Is this what he's going to do every fucking week? Just RKO somebody out of nowhere? Methodically try to fucking take somebody's identity? What's the story? It worked with Jeff Hardy. But Rey Mysterio? I'm not, I don't get, do you give a fuck? I'm asking you guys. You can have your own fucking opinion on it. If you gave a fuck about this, cool. He takes off Mysterio's mask. That's the, You're not supposed to do that. With, with superstars who wear the mask, it's something traditional to them. And it's something that means so much. You do not take off that mask. And he took off the mask. The problem is we've already seen Mysterio get his mask taken off. we already seen Mysterio without his mask back in the day. So they're just rehashing that shit. 
That's all that is. That's what I mean about jumping in a time machine and going backwards 15 years. I don't need to, nor do I want to do that, especially when I just sat through two hours of bullshit as it was. And that's how SmackDown goes off the air. Orton holding up a fucking mask. And that's it, man. That was SmackDown. Like I said, fade the black, go off the air, and Orton is the lasting impression yet again. Oh. <laughs> You come off of Survivor Series. This is your post-Survivor Series show. All the questions are going to be answered. And we're going to set up epic shit for TLC next month. And instead, your lasting impression, your big storyline, is Orton took Mysterio's mask. I'm as interested in that as Ruby Riot breaking Natty's father's glasses. Fucking A, man. This show was insulting to my intelligence. It was embarrassing beyond belief. This is even... This is... Not even worth throwing a mulligan to SmackDown. SmackDown had to come out swinging with this one, man. You can't miss. There was no way you could fail on this show. Coming out of Survivor Series, you could have done so much awesome shit. I had so many ideas for this show. And we get Charlotte beating Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. Trying to do what Becky's already done. Miz is asking Shane to be his tag team partner and gets beat by a jobber. Two jobbers. New Day comes out as pilgrims and has a food fight with the bar and beats the champions. Uh, Asuka and Naomi back together still and they beat Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose again. Daniel Bryan cuts a promo, and Randy Orton takes off Rey Mysterio's mask. I just summed up. Think about what I just did. I just summed up SmackDown's entire two-hour show, post-Survivor Series. Man, if that doesn't scream, there is a fucking issue right now. I'm hearing word, too, guys. I have to see the whole story. I'm hearing word that Monday Night Raw didn't do so hot in the ratings. If that's true, you know, Shane McMahon teased a storyline about making major changes post-Survivor Series because he got swept. No, I think in real life, major changes need to be done in this company. But wait, no, no, no. I'm too negative. I guess I wasn't as negative as a lot of you guys thought I was, right? Maybe I was just being truthful. Maybe I was calling out all the bullshit and I was right in doing so. Because clearly I'm correct. Clearly there's a bigger issue here. And that's the entire fucking company at this point. I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm, I'm actually starting to sweat here. It's going into the winter time. And I'm already fucking sweating. I must have some of that Nia Jax heat. I'm getting some of that organic Nia Jax heat. I'm cool now. I got the heat. Amplified, man. Double fist in that Starbucks and whooping that ass. Thanksgiving Day for those of you that do celebrate it. That's tomorrow. Have no fear for those of you that don't or do and still want a video. There will be an Amplified video tomorrow and I'm bringing back something cool. What's it going to be? You got to tune in to find out, but I think you're going to enjoy it. For now, the Amplified man telling you motherfuckers, check you later.